please. Um, so the first question is from Adam Edelman of NBC News. He says, uh, how will you interpret mixed results through the lens of uh, abortion as an effective focus of Dem campaigns? For example, let's say that uh, issue one passes in Ohio, but Republicans win the chambers in Virginia. Um, does this uh, dilute what has been a major political force for Democrats, or would there be something more nuanced to look for if a situation like that happens? Well, we know abortion is a losing issue for the GOP. Um, and specifically in Virginia, we know that the governor has really tried to hide or sort of uh, bury his agenda behind a flood of cash. I think even if there are right mixed results tomorrow, um, falling short of the trifecta just shows Republicans, right? Falling short of this trifecta, I think just really shows how um, much of a winning th issue this is. The candidates on the door continue to hear about this issue and how incredibly important it is. And when we think about um, sort of the definitions of success tomorrow, there are lots of ways for um, Democrats to succeed. And so we'll keep our eyes on that and um, learn some lessons along the way. Great. Uh, Humberto Sanchez, Pluribus News asks, uh, what does this year's election say about 2024, especially in Virginia? I think the you know, Virginia being on the ballot, of course, um, matters. Uh, it will learn lessons from, um, you know, what took place. But what we do know is that um, right now, Democrats are on a long winning streak this year. We've been overperforming in these special elections by seven points. Um, we know that abortion still matters deeply to voters. We're hearing about it in all of these races. Um, and we know that, uh, you know, we put together a really strong ground game in Virginia, making sure these candidates are on the doors and making sure that we are executing the best plan we possibly can as we head into um, tomorrow. The legislature is the top of the ticket here. Um, and so, you know, we've got a very vested interest in this. But, um, you know, without question, voters have a real opportunity. And um, we know that there'll be lots of conversations about what that means as we head into 2024. Thank you. Um, and one more thing to add, Humberto. Uh, look, like one election is not uh, like an indicator of what, uh, you know, next year is going to be. But the trend is right. And like the trend is that Democrats have over have uh, overperformed every special election so far by seven points. Um, so, you know, depending on what happens tomorrow, like there's a clear trend versus like what the polling shows. Um, and the best indicator of future elections are elections that have already happened. Um, and next question is from Savannah Ketcher of uh, USA Today. She says, uh, is there any concern about the 3,400 voters in Virginia who just recently had their voting rights restored affecting the final outcome? Uh, and this is uh, with Governor Yunkin, uh, you know, uh, illegally uh, taking away their voting rights and saying they couldn't vote now that it, could, it just got restored by a judge. Um, is there any concern that like that might affect the outcome of this? I mean, I think broadly what we know, right, is that these races have historically come down to, um, you know, tight margins and, and really a handful of seats. And, you know, we really believe in the process that we have to ensure that, um, you know, every vote is counted um, appropriately and accurately. And, um, you know, we'll be employing those um, sort of strategies and that plan as we move through tomorrow and as we um, sort of encounter, right, kind of the long window for uh, votes to be counted in Virginia. Great. Next question is, uh, how big of an impact do you think Virginia Governor Yunkin's proposed 15-week abortion ban, uh, abortion restriction will be in tomorrow's result? Like, is the 15-week working? I mean, I'd start by saying, right, a ban is a ban. And as voters wake up on Wednesday, um, you know, they're going to have an understanding or maybe Wednesday, so over the next week as they wake up and we get final results in these chambers. Um, you know, if there's a Republican trifecta, uh, the governor has all but guaranteed that Virginia will be a state with an abortion ban. Um, it will no longer be the only state in the South that doesn't have one. Um, those stakes are really clear and the impact to voters, like he, he could not make them clearer. So uh, I think that there are real opportunities for voters to use their voice um, all the way through polls closing tomorrow and to return those mail-in ballots. 
for um, as long as they can. Uh, and we'll go from there. Great. And then uh, Gillian McClintock of uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer asks, uh, you said there are multiple ways to define success for Democrats tomorrow. Aside from Democrats winning all of the races you've discussed today, what are other ways to define success? Uh, any specific, uh, any indicators you're looking for in Pennsylvania specifically? Yeah, so I think we sort of talked a little bit about this, right? Having a block on the trifecta in uh, Virginia, like we do today, right? Holding one chamber um, is definitely a measure of success. I think as we look into Pennsylvania, um, you know, coming out of the Supreme Court race, and I think all of the education that people had uh, with the Wisconsin win earlier this year, um, the stakes of a state Supreme Court race definitely have um, been raised, right? And there's more of a light on it. And so I think as we look across these states, the ballot measure in Ohio, the Supreme Court race in Pennsylvania, the special election in New Hampshire, um, you know, the multiple paths uh, that we still see um, to potential chamber flip in the Virginia House and the Senate, that there is, you know, a lot of different ways that the dominoes could fall and that we still see ourselves in a, in a position of, um, you know, reporting out good news. Yeah. And, and one thing I'd like to add to that, Gillian, uh, like the early voting is looking good, right? Like if you're a Democrat, um, you know, that's uh, definitely been one of the early voting bright spots. Um, so we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, uh, you know, we're we don't take anything for granted, but we feel, you know, cautiously optimistic about it. Um, next question is from David Wildstein of the New Jersey Globe. He asks, uh, can you tell me how much the DLCC has spent in New Jersey and what districts that investment was in? Uh, what are your takeaways on vote by mail uh, ballots returned so far in early votes? And then uh, will there will last week's cancellation of New Jersey's offshore wind project affect the 11th district race? And what issues are you tracking besides abortion that will uh, cause Democrats to turn out in a traditionally off off year election? I know that's a lot. So let's uh, let's take this one by one. Maybe I'll do an overview of sort of uh, New Jersey and then Obi, if you want to fill 